Thank you for joining me again. I really appreciate your viewership. Please remember to like and subscribe, then hit that bell to get further updates of my material. Today, let's talk about trip planning. Nothing happens until one decides to go on a vacation. With that, welcome to Travel Like an Oching and let the fun begin. What a long day. You know what? It's been a longer month. Getting so sick of the same thing day in and day out. Yeesh. There's my spot. Sweet. I'm gonna give my dogs a rest. <laughs> I need a vacation! Okay, where do I begin? All right, it's been about two years since I went on my last cruise. Time for me to hit the high seas again. Man, my last vacation with the girls was so memorable. I hope you enjoyed that. A small dramatization. What is the timing of your vacation? When do you plan on going, right? You have to think of that early, very early on in your process, just so that you have an idea. You have to also make a decision about whether it's gonna be a land-based vacation or a, um, a, a cruise um, on some vessel, whether it be ocean bound or river or um, whitewater rafting, for example. Once you have a, a idea of that, you gotta really think about doing your homework up front right so that means uh, understanding what are some of the new health concerns in certain areas uh, making sure all of your travel documentation is up to date one big thing that i like to do before i go on vacation let's say i'm going on vacation um, the first week of september well all the way through getting up to that point i'll do things like stop my mail make sure that um, everything is in place, uh, get some interior lights turned on in my uh, place so that people don't know whether I'm there or not. And certainly if you can afford to do this, leave your vehicles at home and use something like public transportation or an Uber or Lyft to get to the airport. And that way it really makes it hard for people to determine if you're home or not. Those are some things I like to do prior to um, the actual vacation. When I talk about do your homework, I'm really referring to uh, jumping on the internet and going to credible sites. Well, how do you know if a site is credible? Well, one quick way is to look at the URL at the top. If you go to a site and um, it has one name, and then when you click a few times on that site, and then that name changes to a whole bunch of weird uh, figures, then it's likely you're on a scam spot and you don't want to do any, you don't want to transact with that. The safest sites are usually the ones where you see 
SSL, secure socket layer, at the beginning of the URL, universal resource link. So you'll want to check those things prior to uh, doing any types of transaction. The other point of advice I'll give or travel hack I'll give is don't pay for anything with a debit card. Always use a credit card. Why? Because the credit card companies have greater leverage when it comes to uh, getting your money back if something should go awry during your um, booking or anything that's going on with your vacation. You really want to get yourself uh, involved with a credible travel professional. And the reason why that's really important is they understand uh, the ins and outs. I have a couple of really good uh, travel agents that I rely on. One is based here in Washington. And one of them one is a good friend I grew up with back in um, Cambridge. So um, I, I will refer to them whenever I have to think about uh, going on a vacation or setting anything up. But the key is you don't want to use them for free advice, right? Your responsibility is to go out and do your initial research, get all the basic information. And when you're ready to book, that's when you contact your travel professional and let them do what they do and they will serve you well. Um, the other thing you want to also remember too is that there's a misconception that once you book, you're done. You, right up until the time you have to um, make last payment or get on whatever travel vacation that you go on, it is your responsibility to keep checking prices, to understand conditions, to understand what's going on, um, um, especially with the rate of change the way it is now in, in the economy the way it is, there's absolutely no way anyone could uh, really understand your situation. Once you find that out, then feel free to call your travel professional and let them know that you think there's a price change or could you look into something or could you find out. It's not their responsibility to monitor your particular case every moment of the day. You really want to understand the um, loyalty programs of any place you're going, whether it be the airlines, the cruise lines, um, Disney, whatever it is, know what the loyalty program rules are and get yourself enrolled, right? Those points add up really quick. And on several occasions, for example, I'm a big cruiser. I, I mentioned that. And one of the things I like to do is to uh, go on big cruise vacations. I didn't realize until lately and now it's work that <clears throat> by enrolling myself and my daughters when they were very young because they cruised with me uh in the travel programs um by now you know we're up to around 25 cruises as a family i know that sounds like a lot it's really not i mean there are people who literally have hundreds but because we've cruised so much that not only i have reached like on world caribbean for example um, diamond status, diamond plus status. My daughters have two, and both of them are, um, well, my oldest is over 18, and my youngest is coming up on 18. So them starting out, they now have um, uh, platinum, diamond status. Unfortunately, cruise, uh, cruise loyalty programs don't transfer across lines, but if you, like I do, travel multiple cruise lines, you have multiple opportunities to uh, build loyalty across those brands and then that will benefit you uh, as you uh, move forward in your cruise life. In addition, never post that you're going on vacation on your social media. A better strategy is plan your vacation, go on your vacation, and only post your pictures and posts when you're back home. And one of the biggest mistakes people make is they will talk about their vacation, say exactly when they're going to be gone, post while they're on vacation. Those are all calling cards for people to know that you're not home and, and you may have your place burgled. So as a safety precaution, be very careful about how you talk about your vacations and your time off or anything on social media. And it's always better to wait until you're home to then post. I have to congratulate you on making it this far. I promise it's just a little bit longer. I want to make an emphasis on making sure that you have a few of these things put in place prior to you going on your vacation. I want to focus on three final hacks. Travel insurance, number one. Airline tickets, number two. And finally, money, moolah. So let's dig in.
Number one, you do want to get some travel insurance, especially when you consider the investment you've made on your trip today. Travel insurance policy in place are to protect things like the overall cost of your vacation. Think about it. You've spent thousands of dollars to put together a vacation. And if something goes wrong, you're now out an additional amount of money that you may not be able to cover. Another thing is you want to make sure you have emergency medical coverage. If you go into different countries, your, your health plan may not cover you. By making sure you have uh, an insurance policy in place, you will be assured of that. The other thing that you want to make sure you want to cover is the ability to be evacuated if you have to be. That is very expensive. In, in fact, it's to the tune of thousands of dollars, not to mention if you have to be hospitalized. However, if you do have it in place, you are going to be covered. These are the reasons you want to have a travel insurance policy in place. It protects you and your family against things that can go bump in the night. Number two, airline tickets. Oh, there's so many things that you can consider when uh, looking at uh, the airline and airfare as you're ready, getting ready for your trip. I just have a few things that I want to cover, and of course there are many more, but these to me are key in, in what I look at to hack my way through uh, a better airline ticket experience. You want to consider purchasing one-way fares. When you buy one-way fares, you're better able to look at different airlines to be able to see if you can hack your way to cheaper flights. By buying one-way fares, you're allowing yourself to um, buy early, get your first segment, wait a little while in case you have to put a budget in place to be able to purchase, and then buy that second ticket so that uh, you'll cover your flight. The, that is always a good way to buy um, flights and it gives you the most flexibility in terms of being able to plan. Once you've purchased your airfare, whether it's a round trip or a one-way ticket, we know we're going to use one-way tickets, uh, make sure that you check back frequently uh, as to the price of what's going on with that ticket. Often it will go down, and we're talking about a matter of hours, right? You get yourself an app that will t help you track the price of your tickets. I use one called TripIt. There are several out there, but it sends me an email uh, in a, a text message when it notices that the fare went down a couple hundred bucks. The benefit of doing that, of course, is you'll be able to get the, those monies transferred into a travel bank so that you can use them later if you paid a certain price. The other point too is buy early enough so that the fares are relatively cheap. You should be able to figure that out uh, as soon as you make your final payment on your cruise. You know you have at least 90 days out. Uh, you could find pretty decent airfares, especially one-way fares at that time. So get yourself locked in, get a price, and just keep monitoring. A lot of people don't use this hack, but it really saves time to consider using one of the TSA programs to expedite you through security lines. There are actually three that are uh, most popular, uh, that those being Global Entry, which is $100 and it lasts five years, uh, TSA PreCheck, which is $85 and also lasts five years, and then the Clear program, which is $179 and is only for one year. Suffice to say, if you're doing any international travel, you'll want to go with the global entry. It costs a little bit more, but it gives you the greatest flexibility to use your benefit outside of the country. It's not all countries that this works in, but there's a good number of them, number of them that do. The pre-check, which is $85, if you're flying mostly domestic, that's a pretty good program to be in. Now, I'm not going to talk disparagingly about Clear. Um, it is renewed every year, and it's $179. Bucks. So those are your three options. The TSA Expedite Programs, um, TSA PreCheck, and Global Entry 
are government, United States government run programs that you have to go on to the government website and register yourself. You create a profile, pay your money. It takes about three to four weeks. I don't know what it is now because of all the, the um, travel restrictions that are going on because of the COVID situation. However, um, it's, it's well worth looking into and uh, getting yourself registered. So hope you take advantage of that hack. It's probably one of my most favorite hacks because believe me, standing in line is one thing, but now that everybody's starting to rush to the airport and trying to um, go somewhere on a plane, the last thing you want to have to deal with is standing in a line. So pre-check really helps expedite that process. The third hack I talk about is to bring cash, but you're gonna need a hard cold cash to handle things like tipping, incidentals, buying gifts in different countries, um, and peace of mind. But get about 50 to $100 in singles, the rest in uh, fives and tens. Try to keep your denominations below $10 so that you don't have to make change because a lot of folks don't make change and put half the money uh, where it's easily accessible to you ever pack money in your check luggage when you carry on luggage you can put a little envelope with your money in because you always have that with you and it is good form to tip right we're not in a world where we don't pay for service and unfortunately the jobs that require tips the organizations aren't paying them a great enough wage be able to supplement. We shouldn't have to do that, but the way it's set up is we end up having to pay for it. I'm not opposed to paying for good service. If you're not getting good service, don't tip as much. But please, please, please remember gratuities. It's, it is that important. Um, the positive vibes of these hacks. But it would be irresponsible if I didn't mention COVID-19. This should be a non- political issue, and I shouldn't have to mention it as a strategy for a hassle-free vacation. However, some folks, for their own reasons, have not received their vaccines yet. Please go and get your shots. It's safe, easy, and is required for most cruise vacations. Don't be the family that gets denied boarding because you're not prepared. This is likely the most controversial thing I'll say, but it is relevant for your trip planning. Thank you again for joining me on another travel hack tip session that is my vlog. Hope you picked up something that will help you out on your next travel vacation. My last message, have fun on your vacation. Remember to like and subscribe and click that bell